Now, Executive Suites with WPRI.com reporter Ted Nisi. Nobody likes having to spend all day sitting at their desks, and studies suggest doing so could be bad for your health. So why not try standing at work? That's what they suggest at Focal Upright Furniture, a Portsmouth-based company that makes stand-up workstations. Their products are earning plaudits nationwide, with Inc. Magazine recently naming Focal Sphere Workstations one of the best designed products made in America. And Focal isn't the only company its chief executive has started. This week on Executive Suite, the co-founder and CEO of Focal Upright Furniture, Martin Keene. Welcome to Executive Suite. I'm Ted Nisi. I know you don't usually see me start the show standing like this, but we are talking about sitting, actually, or uh, when you shouldn't be sitting. And so we're going to demonstrate what we're talking about here. But first, I want to thank you. Martin Keene, thanks for being here today. My pleasure. Thank Martin, you, what is this uh, little red contraption in front of me that I'm uh, showing the folks here? Uh, this is called our Mobis seat. Okay. Uh, we just started manufacturing this last week. So it's more of a perching seat, halfway okay. between sitting and standing. So I'm going to show folks. So I just... You just sit down on it and you keep your feet on the ground, but you're kind of, I'm kind of perched up by Correct. being here as opposed to being sort of flat like I would be on a normal seat. What's different about this? Why did you, what do you think the, uh, the market for this is? Well, the, the idea is it's keeping your pelvis rocked mm -hmm. a little bit closer to standing, but not all the way towards standing. So you're, you, in, you notice instantly that your back becomes rather straight, like yep. your mother told you to sit That's up right. straight. So, it, but it, it keeps you, keeps your feet on the ground because yep. you're, you're just perching on it. You always have to keep your feet on the ground and uh, keeps your head high, keeps your, your back straight, and the idea is it just keeps your energy level. And we have another example. I'll grab it here behind the set here. Uh, what is this one here? It looks almost like <laughs> a pogo stick. Show the viewers uh, yeah. what that is. So this is a portable uh, seat, uh, travel seat, or it can be used in the office on the golf course if you like to go and watch uh, golf, golf matches. The idea is it's just two pounds, and uh, you can assemble it quickly. Okay. All right, it has an extendable leg. Okay. You can adjust it for any height. Aha. Uh -huh. And, <laughs> and there it, it is. Use it as like a, uh, it's like a human kickstand in a way. So yeah. A lot of small startup companies are buying this because it's inexpensive and they'll take a cardboard box and put it on top of their inexpensive desk and they'll use their their laptop this up way. Up there, up top. Interesting. Yeah. All right, we'll put, we'll put that one away and we'll, uh, we're will we going to perch up here, folks. So if I fall off or anything, I don't hold it against Martin. I just haven't practiced. So where did you get the idea for this, for these, I mean, standing desks have been around for a while, the idea that, I know, I actually remember Donald Rumsfeld, the former defense secretary, always uh, used a standing desk, they say. Yeah. But uh, wh why, is that, why is that important? Why did you even think this, this sort of different way of, of being at our workspaces was important? I, I didn't really think about it from that, from that way. It was, it was really a bor an idea born of need, a need that I had when I was sitting at my desk designing footwear doing the same sort of repetitive activity over and over. I didn't find sitting down worked for me creatively. Uh, you, know, you know when you get your first job and you're assigned a cubicle and you're given a chair and you think that's how we're supposed to work. Well, I didn't feel, when I moved back to Rhode Island in 1995 and built my own studio, 1994, and built my own studio, I realized that I had the opportunity to design my space however I wanted and I didn't want to sit anymore. <laughs> Uh, I try, so I went and bought an architect's uh, standing height table and started working standing up. Uh, that was great, but as you know, standing all day or standing for hours or weeks on end can be quite tiring. So I actually went and got an old uh, uh, tractor seat that uh, somebody had fashioned out of a, uh, an old New England tractor, you know, what rusted old uh, tractor seat and put it on a uh, welded wire uh, base as a high stool. And I, I tipped that forward one day and just started leaning against it very much like this. Mm -hmm. And just found that it was halfway between sitting and standing and just helped me to maintain higher energy, better energy throughout the day. It made me feel more creative. Uh, it wasn't sitting, it wasn't standing, it's somewhere in between that no other company for some reason has thought of, no other furniture company. And it's funny, I, can, I, can, I agree, you, can, you feel very different, you wouldn't think, but just you're sitting up, you have nothing, no back support, so you're doing your own back support here and sitting on it, but it's all just feel fairly firm as long as you have your feet yeah. firmly planted yeah. on the ground. Um, how, have you found success so far? Are people enjoying it? Uh, we have found very good success. We only uh, launched two years ago last month at the uh, IC ICFF show in New York, that's the International Contemporary Furniture Fair. Uh, 
instantly we got a huge amount of press because the, the time, the timing is sometimes everything. We, you know, everyone is going to this idea of standing desks. All these stories are coming out about sitting disease and uh, you know metabolic issues, and uh, just the amount of weight gain going on in this country is in the last 20 years since really the development of the internet and and computers has just been uh, incredible. And a lot of it has to do with the sedentary activity that the, the chair induces. You know, so we go to work, we sit down, and if you think about your 16-hour waking day, uh, nine to 10 hours of the, that, that, uh, that waking day of yours is spent sitting down, whether it's the commute or at work, uh, you know, sitting on the couch, sitting you at, come the, home at the and dining you sit table. Again, right? yeah. <laughs> so it's, we don't think about it. We don't think about the technology we developed and how we kind of get lost in that technology. And we haven't uh, cons considered a, the hardware that our software needs. You know, we're, we're still sitting down or we're standing up and maybe there's a place in between. Uh, you know, we, we advocate standing for, for sure, but try and, you know, try and lean and stand instead of sit and stand. That's One the, thing yeah. that's different too is, I mean, what we're using here, what we showed before, you, you, you do make full on desks as well, a full, a full contraction, but this is also it seems like a way for someone to make probably a smaller investment too in something to change their workspace. Yes, this is true. I mean, there are, you know, you can get a cardboard box and put it on top of your desk and use our, our MOGO, which is $125. So for, for that, you've, you know, you're upgrading your, your activity, what's called uh, you know, low intensity physical activity throughout the day, and it's just those small movements that you make throughout the day that add up to, to much better wellness and uh, you know, much higher calorie burn. Up to 350 calories per day is, has been shown if you are standing and leaning versus sitting wow. all day. Now, uh, where do you actually make the, the desks and, and these chairs? Well, we, or we chair. are we calling them chairs? What do you call them? Uh, we call them seats. seats. A, cha a chair okay. has a backrest, and it's ah. uh, you know it tends to be what you traditionally use. But these are seats. Obviously, you're sitting on the seat of your pants. <laughs> right. And uh, so yeah, we call them seats. Uh, we we build these in in Portsmouth. Uh, the, the Mogo is made in Asia, mm -hmm. wholly made in Asia. Uh, some of our parts come from Germany. Uh, some parts come from Asia. Uh, from North Carolina, from Massachusetts, and from Rhode Island. They all come together in Portsmouth, and uh, we do the assembly there. So uh, the seat you're sitting on is uh, about 35% cost of goods coming from locally, you know, mm -hmm. as far as uh, the amount of employment we're, we're, uh, we're using to create that seat. Uh, our locus workstation is about 45% cost of goods uh, domestic. And then our sphere is almost 50% you know, cost of goods domestic. And I think so. you, uh, we were talking before the show, you're actually getting ready to move to Quonset. We just had Greencore, the food company, on, which is moving there, and you'll be joining them. Yeah. Yeah, no, we have, uh, we have a great spot in, in Portsmouth, but it, we've outgrown it in, in the two years we've been there, uh, 10,000 square foot space. So we're moving to a, a much more industrial space, 20,000 square feet, um, and it just is going to allow us to build more product. Uh, you know, our demand is growing. And uh, we're adding more personnel, so it's a uh, we're happy about the move. The commute for me from Jamestown is about the same. So, <laughs> so you're all, you're all yeah. right with it. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk more about Focal Upright, but we're also going to talk about Keen Footwear, which uh, some of you may be familiar with. Those are those sandals with something in the front, so you don't stub your toe. We're going to talk about Martin's involvement in uh, bringing that company together. So stick with us for much more on Executive Suite. Welcome back to Executive Suite. I'm Ted Nisi, and our most loyal fans and viewers will notice we're not sitting on our usual chairs this week. That's because we are in Martin Keene's Focal Upright Furniture. These are, I want to say it right, these are the Mobis seats. Correct. Which sort of hoist you up, and uh, you're, you're halfway, you're perching, you're halfway between sitting and standing. Very interesting. One thing that you don't like about this sort of world of different types of being at your workspace is treadmill desks. Why are you a skeptic about treadmill desks? I, I don't, it's not that I don't like them. I think the evidence has shown that while, while I think they're great for getting some exercise for part of the day, uh, if you use a treadmill desk for most of the day, there are a lot of errors th in your work. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just emailing errors, uh, just processing, brain processing errors, because your brain is also thinking about what it's doing, you know, downstairs. <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> you know, when you're walking, it does, it does take a little bit of horsepower to, uh, uh, to think about that. A uh, small amount, but it's, you know, it's taking away from your thought processes uh, relative to your, you know, business at hand. And the idea is to actually make more things fade away to focus on Correct. Work, right? Yeah. Um, so Focal is actually 
not your most famous company. That would be Keen Footwear, which is based out in Oregon today. Um, and that company was started because of your frustrations with sailing. Tell me about that. Yeah, it, well, no, not a frustration with sailing. Not I love with sailing. sailing. Yeah. Uh, but during you know, sailing. During sailing, yeah, I just, you know, sailing, there's a lot of things to, uh, when you're competing, uh, you're watching the competition. I, I do race sailboats, so the idea came from uh, the idea that uh, if you're watching the competition, you're watching the water, you're watching where the wind is coming from, you're not watching where you're going on the boat. And if you're in sandals, which, you know, in the summertime, it's nice to sail in sandals, your toes are hanging out there and a little bit vulnerable. So. Uh, I had been working in the industry for about 12, 12 years at that point when I came up with the idea on Narragansett Bay and just realized that I had the ability as a footwear designer to create a, a model, to create a, a prototype, which I did in uh, 1999. Um, and I actually built it in my barn in Jamestown and wore it for uh, two years. Um, all of my friends thought it was the ugliest thing I'd ever, <laughs> they'd ever seen, so I knew I was onto something. And it uh, is, you know, it's just been beyond my wildest dreams since then. And uh, one of your first beta testers, I love the story, was actually Steve Jobs. How did that come yeah. about? I was in uh, an airport in San Francisco. He was headed to Japan. I was headed to Hong Kong. Uh, and I was using my Mac. I was setting up our, I was creating our first catalog for Keen. And a gentleman came over to me and said, what do you use your Mac for? And it was the head of marketing for, for Apple. Uh, and I said, I, you know, creating this catalog for this new shoe company. And he said, oh, I'm from Apple. Here's a new operating system. So I was excited. And I said, do you know Steve Jobs? <laughs> and I, he, he, said, uh, he said, of course, yeah, he's here, he's here with me. I'm like, oh my, really, could I, could I meet him? Could I get his shoe size? So I got an opportunity to, uh, to meet him and, and uh, get his shoe size and sent him a, a size 11 and a half, which I don't know if anyone has read his, his book. He is. Uh, he wears it. In, I think on three pages. He's got. Uh, he's got my shoes on, which is just <laughs> to be able to shod the the gentleman who refused to wear shoes for most of his life right. uh, is quite an honor for me. <laughs> so, and I'm a, I've been an Apple user since, you know, since the late '80s. So, so uh, and and it wasn't just Steve Jobs by any means. Keen was uh, was and is the fastest growing outdoor shoe company in the world. I mean, you said how how uh, gratifying it was. Were you surprised, or did you know I have something huge? This is going to be a big big deal. Well, I I knew that the I, the product that I had created, the Newport sandal, I named it after obviously Newport, Rhode Island. Um, was was a huge benefit to me and the early people that that uh, that, proto you know, that wore some of the prototypes. I had no idea how huge the company was going to get. I really didn't. But you know, it's hard to uh, imagine that size. Uh, so I, I just always kind of keep my head down and, and just keep grinding out great product. That's my that's my uh, my motto. You know, I don't care about how big it's going to get. I just want to create great product for uh, you know. To to protect people's toes or to you know protect people's backs, help, you know, now allowing them to work better. So and uh, it still carries your name, but are you are you still involved with Keen Footwear directly? I, I'm not. I sold my ownership four years ago uh, to my partner, so it's still a privately held company uh, based in Oregon. Uh, and I wanted to focus my my energy wholly on on Focal Upright, it's something completely different. I feel like I'm working my way up the body <laughs> from a uh, body conscious design perspective. Soon we'll have hats. Yeah, pretty um, soon we'll have protective hats. <laughs> <laughs> protect our heads. Um, is it? I have to ask though. Is it tough? Something uh, a company and a product that was so uh, integral to your life and that even carries your name. Is it tough to to step away from that to do something new, or is it more that's that's being an entrepreneur? You, you want to do the next thing. You know, it's. Uh, Fortunately, the name is in the dictionary, uh, so I didn't have to be associated with the with the company all along. Um, I didn't always want to be in footwear, and uh, I think I just was always looking for other opportunities to to explore my creativity. I had I have I'm full of ideas, and I you know I've been in the footwear industry for 21 years, so. And your father was too, right? My my father was before that, so that's how I how I got into it, and. Uh, you know, so I really just wanted to push myself as a creative individual to look at other problems that are out there in the world. You know, not just people who are, you know, hitting their toes or need something for, you know, that, that fits better for their feet. But uh, you know, I, I personally was having these issues with with sitting. I didn't like sitting, so I, I wanted to create this other this other product uh, for and, myself. And so. before we, we have, we're coming up on another break, but before we we go there, uh, just briefly tell the story of. 
uh, when you were driving one day and you were thinking of not going into footwear and, and what happened and how that affected you? Yeah, this was maybe a year into my first job. I worked for Saucony up in Peabody, Mass. And uh, I, I, you know, I have a love of sailing. I, I went to industrial design school. Um, I love designing product. Uh, I wanted to combine those two into you know, designing yachts. I thought I wanted to be a yacht designer. So I actually made an appointment with Eric Gertz here in, uh, in Bristol, Rhode Island, who was sort of the premier builder of uh, incredible racing yachts. Uh, and I got a half day off work, told my boss, I, you know, I'm going to go, I don't know, I don't know <laughs> what I told him, but I was driving down to, to Quonset, or to, um, to Bristol, and I uh, got halfway there and, and thought, you know, there's a lot of, uh, there's a long way to, to go to get into a different industry. Uh, I kind of liked footwear, uh, so I decided to stay. I turned around and I stayed in, stayed in footwear, which, you know, I kind of, sort of regretted to this day, but at the same time, I, had, I made a name for myself. Uh, it's enabled me to now start another company. Uh, so, uh, you know, we always we always have these these wants and dreams that we if you don't continue to pursue them, then I think uh, yeah, you'll feel a little bit um, unsatisfied. I don't know. All right, we're going to take another break. When we come back, we're going to talk about what Martin thinks Rhode Island can do to encourage more uh, different types of companies and startups in Rhode Island. Maybe maybe not other seats, but other types of businesses. Yeah. So stick with us on Executive Suite. Welcome back to Executive Suite. I'm Ted Nisi, and I am sitting. Our executive seat today is a Mobis seat from Focal Upright Furniture. That is one of Martin Keene's companies. It's his current company. He also, you might know him as the founder, uh, co-founder of Keene Footwear, which protects the, your toes when you're uh, out in sandals on a boat or something. Uh, Mark, you're not. You mentioned you mentioned briefly your your parents are actually from were from England originally, and you Correct. grew up in Ohio. How did you end up here in Rhode Island? Yeah, uh, I, yeah. I was born in the UK. I came. We came over on a ship actually to New York, New York Harbor, and uh, when I was about seven, uh, moved to Cincinnati, Ohio. My father was working for a footwear company there. Uh, when I, I ended up going to college in Ohio, went to Ohio State University. When I uh, let's say I guess I was first introduced to the East Coast. Uh, in the summers uh, of college, I went and taught sailing out in Martha's Vineyard. Uh, so I fell in love with the area. I fell in love with Martha's Vineyard, Boston, uh, New England, the Hall of New England just seemed like a great place to live. Um, when I finished my last job before I started Keene Design Studio, uh, so I worked for two companies. I worked for a company in, in uh, Peabody, Mass, Saucony. Then I worked for K-Swiss. I was design director for K-Swiss in California, LA. Uh, my wife and I, uh, my wife got pregnant in L.A. I did not want to raise children in L.A., um, a crazy place. Uh, I wanted to come back to a place that was much more real and affordable. So we moved to Jamestown uh, because I'd, I'd raced a lot in, in Newport and I uh, just love the sailing on the bay. So uh, we've been in Jamestown uh, 20, yeah, 20 years this, this year. So it will be obvious to people why you founded uh, Focal here in Rhode Island. Yeah. You're living here, raising your children here. But, you know, we talk a lot about the, the economy and starting companies in Rhode Island, mm -hmm. being a business person in Rhode Island. I mean, were there special challenges to being in Rhode Island? Did you ever say, oh, maybe this isn't the place to start it. I'll go to Massachusetts. I'll go, to, I'll go back to Ohio or something. Yeah, because I'm here, you know, right now we're a small team. Uh, we have 16. We just hired our 16th employee yesterday. Um, you can start a company anywhere, but this was a physical product. We're building a physical product, and you know, I don't. While I've worked a lot in Asia, uh, it's it's much easier to me to have the control uh, to build something locally. So we we've built a lot of the tooling in Asia. Obviously, start up when you're starting a new company. The uh, the most important thing is to control the, the startup cost before you've once you've proven the concept, then you can pour more cash into yeah. it. But uh, you know, the, on those those early stages, you want to, you know, really develop uh, the tooling in, in an economical way. So uh, I worked with a lot of the companies in Asia that I'd worked with for footwear to develop the tooling, but then we'd bring the parts back here. We'd make parts uh, locally. We'd make parts in North Carolina. We get our lifting mechanisms from Germany, and then we bring them all back here. So, you know, it's assembly. It's some light manufacturing. Uh, and I think to, to, to do it here, there was really no choice for me. I just wanted to do it locally. I, I know that I, I love Rhode Island. I know the economy here is struggling. And if I can do my part, right now we're only 16 strong, but you know, we're moving to this, uh, this place in Quonset. We're going to need more people. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll definitely need some more, uh, you know, some more work, work help. 
If you so, had policymakers, uh, you know, came to you and said, Martin, any ideas? What, what, what would you say? What would you encourage to try to spur more entrepreneurship, more sparring, starting of new companies and mm -hmm. uh, growth of business here in Rhode Island? What comes to mind? Well, I, I love the beta spring model here. Uh, I think that's that's a, a wonderful thing. W unfortunately, what they primarily, uh, well, I don't think it's their fault, but a lot of the the the, uh, the kids that are developing these these new companies, they're developing tech, a lot of tech companies, tech tech apps and, and things. And I, you know, I'm a physical product person, and I think to be able to develop a product, you know, and, and maybe the state, if the state were to fund. Uh, sort of a maker space where you have 3D printers, you have some CNC machines and some milling machines where, you know. What's uh, a CNC machine? A CNC, a computer num numerically controlled machine for cutting, cutting steel parts, That's for cutting wood parts uh, uh, to, to, a, to a CAD uh, drawing. Uh, you know, so that it was easier for somebody to, to do the early prototyping here, to maybe do the early production here, you know, and I think uh, that's something that the state could, it would be great for them to be able to step up and, and fund something that was a physical space where uh, students could go or recent graduates could go and, and create their physical ideas. And uh, tell me a little more about what's the outlook uh, for Focal? What are you fo focusing on right now and what's, uh, what are you hoping for this year and into next year? Uh, well, we had a, a great first year. I think we're going to triple our, our, uh, our number this, this year. Um, next year, uh, who knows? I mean, I, I, I imagine the, the adoption rate of our product, the amount of people abandoning chairs and realizing the, uh, the issues with sitting for so much of the day um, and realizing they need to be more active even if it's just low intensity physical, physical activity like, you know, like we're doing here, uh, which adds up to you know, much better health. Um, I think we, uh, you know, corp the corporations that are adopting our companies from, from Google to Apple to Wikimedia, uh, I just got a call from uh, my uh, business development guy from, uh, he was at Raytheon today and they are, they are loving our product. Um, so I, I think the, there's, I think our, our issue is going to be can we meet the demand? Which I think is a, you know, is a great problem to have and uh, you know, the, it would be wonderful to be able to have to double our space again and, uh, and bring more employees on. So, Only about 30 seconds left, Martin. Uh, is there anywhere someone could try one if they are fine? Are there any stores there in yet or anything like that? Uh, we don't have any retail stores locally. We do have uh, a few in, in California, in Portland, um, uh, in, uh, down in Texas, Austin, Texas. Uh, we do have some dealerships up in Boston. They're, they generally don't, you know, they de generally don't want individuals to go in and, and look at the product, but uh, we have a showroom in Portsmouth, so, and we'll soon have a, a showroom in, in, uh, in Quonset. So welcome to come and try the product. Come on down and try it. I can tell yeah. you it's different and it's, it's fun. So, well, Martin Keene, thank you so much for being here this week. I want to thank all of you for tuning in. Be sure to tune in next week when my guest will be Scott Wolf from Go, Grow Smart Rhode Island. We're going to talk about the historic tax credit program and what's going on with that. And uh, if you missed any of this show or any other episode of Executive Suite, you can catch them all on our website, WPRI.com. I'll see you back here next week on Executive Suite.